I'm the Reverend David Kamak, Rector of Trinity Episcopal Church, which is located at 7474 Washington Boulevard, uh, Baltimore 21227, in the area known as Waterloo. Uh, to start off with, what is your background in counseling and what education do you have? I am a graduate of the Virginia Theological Seminary, called the Master of Divinity, uh, which is the first seminary to require any of its graduates not only to take uh, counseling-related courses every single of the three years one is there, but in addition, the full semester in a mental hospital uh, in order to become uh, even more intensively involved in uh, this dimension of psychology and counseling that pertains to human problems. Uh, furthermore, I better add, I have taken refresher courses uh, uh, and continued reading the field my entire career, which is now over 25 years. Do you have any experience with the court system of the law? Very little. Uh, when did you become uh, Minister of Trinity? I became the rector here, uh, minister of the gospel here, in uh, late 1983. Uh, did you meet the Blythe family at that time or shortly thereafter? I was recovering from a back injury in 1983, but in 1984 I began to take service regularly and met the Blythe family within the first uh, month, the month or second, within one or two months of my job. At that time, um, did Mr. Bly or the Bly family discuss their in-laws coming from Vietnam with you? And what was the total discussion about? This discussion did not begin until later in 1984, uh, toward, as I remember, the uh, summer or fall of 84, and, and then at that time, uh, uh, Mr. Bly mentioned that uh, his wife's brother was in Vietnam with the family and that uh, they were interested in bringing to this country and they would help if there would be a, a, a church uh, sense of support for that. And I was able to talk to our two leading lay officers and thought there should be no problem in my uh, writing the letter in that respect. Uh, uh, do you know when uh, the in-laws did come and were they accompanied by supposed to play much by natural born order? My dates may be a little fuzzy, as remember they, that, that I recall they arrived somewhere in 1985 and um, Part of the whole arrangement was uh, not only uh, to bring his wife's brother's family over, but the particular interest was in reuniting them with uh, a daughter which had been left in Vietnam under the guidance of the family there uh, when Mr. Blaney's wife first came to this country, and that uh, the opportunity now was to bring them to this country via the family of the wife's brother. Uh, upon their arrival, did Mr. Bly have counseling sessions with you about family problems? Oh, indeed so. Uh, we talked about their arrival. I met them all uh, soon after they arrived, uh, but it continued on just a rather formal and friendly basis from time to time. However, after a number of months had gone by, Mr. Bly he did start talking to me about problems within the family in which uh, he was feeling unexpectedly a great sense of rejection. The rejection seemed to be coming from this uh, uh, supposed daughter of his and indeed also from all the rest of the Vietnamese members in that household because they were all living together in Mr. Bly's household at all to the Vietnamese, and uh, Mr. Bly was being excluded from all of their uh, family, cultural uh, enthusiasm of being here together, and 
turned into a very lonely, difficult period, and uh, so he talked to me a good bit about how best to handle such a situation. Uh, and did Mr. Fly Ray actually come to his house to talk, sit down and talk with his in-laws or his family about the problem? I don't remember that. It was mainly Mr. Bly coming to uh, my uh, rectory talk. I did go by the house a couple of times, but the uh, uh, conversations were, were, were largely superficial at that time. So it was mainly uh, his coming to me. And I was, of course, always open and available should the others wish to come to, but uh, they never did. Did Mr. Fly ever express an interest for you to talk to the girls while she lived in his home? I think he did express that interest, but again, my usual approach is not to intrude and uh, indicate that uh, the initiative should come from uh, the family and themselves, but I would be very happy to be available to, to talk uh, if that were um, in late December, early January, did Mr. Bly increase his counseling sessions with you due to family problems in the home? Oh, indeed. Indeed, indeed he did. Uh, I would say that uh, we probably talked at least every two weeks, and uh, uh, the feelings were uh, obviously uh, upsetting that Mr. Bly was feeling with this sense of rejection and couldn't understand. I tried to return uh, to understanding the other side by saying, of course, the family would have their enthusiasm in coming together. Of course, the girl being a teenage uh, tends to be, in any culture, rejecting of parents. So that uh, I tried to point out the other side as well as to understand the side. In January of 86, uh, was the girl taken away from the boss and put into foster care? This is what I understand, and indeed, when uh, the uh, situation reached a height of intensity like this, uh, I was more concerned. I had counseled Mr. Bly uh, a month or two before that uh, removal of the girl to a foster home took place that it would really be better for the whole family if they could get the brother's family out of the house. That is Mrs. Bly's brother out of the house and not have this contention going on within what had been a, a, a relatively uh, stable home that the Bly's had with uh, three uh, wonderful children. Did you attend the first um, juvenile hearing um, January 7th of 1986 in front of Mayor Schwarzenegger? Yes, I've tried to be supportive to uh, the Bly family through this whole thing. I had no idea, of course, firsthand whether the accusations could have been true or not true, but it is still my duty to be supportive to people in a Christian uh, redemptive sort of way. And so I did show up I did know something about counseling. I wanted to offer uh, my help to them. I had done, indeed, at that occasion, research of some intensity to find out what is the best way to handle situations of the Vietnamese family coming over and uh, accusations being made by them as had been made against Mr. Bly for child abuse. And uh, uh, with all this information from my own resources in the Episcopal Diocese and from contacts in the Fiscal Diocese of Washington, D.C., uh, I had a number of people lined up who were ready to uh, do the type of counseling that should be needed because one of the first things I was told when I asked what should be the proper line of counseling from my own resources was that most people do not know, even trained American psychologists do not know how to handle the cultural Vietnamese input, and it was most important that someone counseled them who did have a Vietnamese background or was thoroughly schooled in Vietnamese psychology. Otherwise, the counseling would be probably more harmful than helpful. 
so I did know this. I wrote a letter to Howard County uh, before that hearing, and uh, as I attended that hearing, uh, I met the man of Howard County who was mainly in charge of those uh, council sessions, uh, Mr. Marshall, and um, as soon as the hearing was over, he came to me and, and said we must work together to get this uh, uh, family counseling that was proper, and I said, by all means, he said, you'll soon be hearing from me. Unfortunately, I never did, and I don't think the proper counseling ever took place. You were jumping to the second hearing that was set in February. I was concerned with the first hearing to authorize and keep from public here January 7, 1986, where did Mr. Bly at his first hearing request counseling? I only went to one hearing. I don't know which month, which month it was. Uh, I went to a hearing in 1986 in which I heard the judge say that family counseling must take place. That's where I met Mr. Marshall. Uh, and the plan was to go on from there. About a year later, uh, I did attend another hearing to find out how the uh, foster care had gone, but uh, those conversations didn't apply to that later hearing. They applied to that first hearing. After the first hearing um, that you did not attend, uh, did Mr. Fly have counseling sessions that he had asked the court for counseling and blood tests from the girl and they refused constantly to do anything? The first hearing, according to Mr. Bly's category, I don't know anything about. I was not there. Uh, I think Mr. Bly told me that those things had happened. Uh, what I'm calling the first hearing was uh, before the master, uh, I think his name is Judge Schwesinger, as I described uh, before. So I, I do not know firsthand anything about the uh, hearing that Mr. Bly is calling the first hearing. Uh, during the whole course of this, starting from January 2nd to the present, has Mr. Bly strenuously uh, expressed his view that this girl should receive counseling and the truth would be found out? Oh, indeed so, and I felt that was absolutely essential. But so far as I know of, uh, uh, having offered my help to Howard County, uh, I was amazed and distressed that Howard County did nothing to talk with me further about uh, what I knew of the case firsthand and the resources I knew that could help the case. Um, did Officer Bates, Robert Bates of the Howard County Police ever contact you in regards to the allegation? He never contacted me. No one from Howard County has ever contacted me about uh, this case, though, as I say, I've offered my help many times and the position to have been some real help. You stated you wrote a letter uh, dated February 1st, 1986 the officials. Could you summarize that letter? Yes, the gist of that letter was pretty much in line with what I just reported orally um, a couple of questions ago. Uh, letting the people of Howard County know the specific names of the people who would be recommended to me as excellent and being help, able to help with a case like this. Uh, someone in Silver Spring, someone in uh, Arlington, Virginia, someone over in uh, Anne Arundel County. Um, I also stated in that letter very briefly uh, what I knew of the Bly family and thought that this uh, was a, a, a sound family that uh, uh, was promoting the right kind of values uh, to the children and that um, uh, this present uh, crisis in which the teenage girl arrived along with the uh, family of uh, Mrs. Bly's brother uh, was just calling such a problem that uh, the help was sorely needed and that I would not be able to be the one to answer but I did know and indeed our diocese had, had a number of experience bringing refugees here did know who could helpfully handle this problem and so far as I say, nothing was ever done in contact with them from that point on by Howard County. 
um, up until trial, where Officer Bates testified that he did a complete investigation, you stated he had never contacted you or nor did any other county official or that you at the trial that took place much later, uh, I was presumably going to be one of the possible witnesses, so I was excluded from hearing any of the testimony since witnesses were kept outside. But I was permitted to be inside and hear the final statements. And at that time, uh, I heard the final statement of the prosecution say that Officer Bates had testified that he had made a complete investigation. I knew that to be false. I also heard her say that Mr. Marshall had done a very thorough job. I knew that to be false. I also heard her say that she had made a very full investigation, and I knew she never contacted me because I do know that I knew things about that case that no one else did. Uh, were you witness to uh, Kim Jules' testimony in court, or did you read the transcript afterward? Later on, uh, there was another hearing before the judge. I think it had to do with uh, sentencing or review of the sentencing trial motion. A new trial motion, apparently, was the title. Yes, I did hear Kim Jules' testimony. Uh, I was not surprised by uh, because I had heard uh, Mr. Bly and his family talk about the fact that uh, there was a high degree of probability that there had been a conspiracy launched by the members of this newly arrived family in which uh, the supposed daughter would make a, uh, an accusation of child abuse having learned that uh, this was one of the best ways to get out of the house and be, that there seemed to be a motivation for her to get out of the house, which is attempting to be maintained in proper discipline because uh, she apparently did not like being under the, uh, the rules of that household. And so, uh, so whatever be all the piled up resentful reasons, this was going to be her device to get out and also I gathered to get Mr. Bly. This became officially substantiated in testimony given by Kim Jewell on the stand and uh, uh, given under oath, and that therefore began to change the complete perspective on the nature of the trial, and therefore I wrote a letter to the judge who heard the thing that uh, uh, having heard that testimony, I now understand more fully what was going on in this uh, Bly household problem uh, because before it had seemed like uh, certain actions were retained for being taken beyond what were justified but now if there really had been an effort uh, of vengeance of this sort uh, everything fell into place uh, later on after trial and sentencing did you become aware of a pre-sentence investigation, I mean, a uh, psychological evaluation of the girl that Mr. Bly showed you where she stated her mom was in Vietnam and was alive? Uh, Mr. Bly continued to talk with me throughout every stage of this very difficult period. And I became cognizant through him uh, as he became eligible to see the documents that had been uh, compiled, uh, only through that indirect means did I learn, and indeed uh, he had begun to suspect that possibly uh, uh, this girl who supposedly was a daughter might not really be their daughter, and uh, then this uh, information that was uh, found uh, when these documents were obtained seemed to verify that she had, uh, now I've never seen the documents firsthand,
in for that color has to be with the with the
talked to me. Apparently, I didn't talk with me very briefly in the uh, recess, which took place at that time, and I did not have one of the rules. Uh, and I would think that, of course, uh, the potential come up and it never occurred to me uh, that uh, when they broke it might be to uh, the justice of the law, when it turns out that the prosecution had not proved this case. I've not been there for the uh, testimony here by the prosecution and all this has been brought out. But uh, the attorney for Mr. Bryan was convinced, uh, Mr. Fallon was convinced that they had by no means proved their case and that everything in the case would be based upon um, against him uh, with the witnesses that were obviously uh, completely contradictory and unreliable. Therefore, uh, the basic American system of uh, your innocence is still proved guilty and the fact that it had not been proved. Uh, therefore, the decision seemed to be made not to take up any more uh, time and expense of the court, but uh, to you know, offer defense of no. Uh, there was no uh, defense offered, and uh, I wondered about that at the same time. Uh, Well, 
that of, of comparing cultures and religions and done some special research into the Vietnamese situation that uh, in a way not quite like our own culture, their sense of family obligation and loyalty um, to a blood relative is absolutely sacrosanct to the point that the truth is not necessarily found characteristic of not speaking the truth, whereas in our own culture, we have a high priority on it, and therefore there's a tendency for this blood loyalty run so strong is to say whatever you think the people want to hear to keep the family loyalty uh, to blood bonds together, and this is what we say to